Welcome to an illustrated introduction to U.S. Aids to Navigation using examples from the Seattle area of Puget Sound in Washington State. An aid to navigation by itself does not tell the whole story. Saying that there's a red buoy does not say much other than there's a safe water concern. A chart is needed to give the proper context to any navigation aid. Good boaters and navigators know where they are at all times. Never use a single point of navigation. The chart you're using might not be up to date. Charts should be kept up to date using the local notice to mariners. An aid to navigation might have been moved either by accident or on purpose. And what color is that light? Well, white and yellow lights can be easily confused. Short duration green lights can be confused for white lights. So you always want to check the pattern and timing of a light. And many aids, aids to navigation are only visible for two or three miles. This is a good resource. I like it. It has all of chart number one, and it expands and explains surprises that a boater might encounter when on the water. It has many added pictures and sections from charts. Chart scales and plotters. The GPS is like looking through a little window, so you have to zoom in and out to see detail plus to see the overall area. So the proper scale of a chart is needed for safe navigation. Detail is needed for entering a harbor, but you need a larger area to show how to get to that harbor. Well, having aids to navigation examples from the Seattle area of Puget Sound, but they will apply to any area in the U.S., Region B, Canada, Mexico, etc. We'll start by coming down from the north up by the Shilshul Marina area. We need to talk about lateral markers. Red right returning from the sea. A lateral aid indicates safe water. You need to stay on the correct side of the mark for safety. You have the red, which is a non or pointy triangular shape, or the green, which are can shaped. Coming down from the north, we have the metal point buoy. It's green. It has a magenta circle indicates that it's a lighted buoy. It's flashing. Flashing green for a four second cycle. The circle at the base indicates that it's not fast and solid to the earth, so it's a position approximate due to the anchor road and watch circle. So red right returning from the sea, we want to leave this buoy on the left or port side of the vessel when southbound. At night, finding safe water in the Shilchul area can be a little bit uh, difficult because you have car lights in the parking lot that can obscure. So you want to stay on a line outside of a line running from the Meadow Point buoy to the north breakwater lights. Now the vessel traffic turns northwest just north of the breakwater and this traffic pattern can be confusing with some inbound traffic going to the boat launch ramp or dry storage and other traffic going southbound to the fairway. This is the north entrance of the marina. The cranes have lights on the top, not shown on the chart, and this can be very confusing, as well as the other lights in the area. If your chart's not updated, it can contain errors, and you can get confused. Buoy SB is no longer present, so this chart's a bit out of date. We now have the north mooring buoy, also commonly called a hamburger buoy. The magenta circle indicates it's a lighted buoy. No color for the light means it's a white light, flashing white four second cycle. Private, not maintained by the Coast Guard. And note the horizontal blue band, which is normal for mooring buoys. Let's take a look at the north breakwater light. It's flashing red for two and a half seconds, solid to earth, the dot good position. 28 feet above mean higher high water. Five miles can be seen from five nautical miles in good visibility if the observer is high enough above the water. And again the solid dot indicates that you have a good reliable position. Magenta exclamation point indicates that it's a lighted aid. Red right returning from the sea pass to your right or starboard side of the vessel. We don't want to pass too close to the breakwater. You want to be able to see around the breakwater for traffic. If you're coming down from the north, 
the breakwater light can be shielded by the metal point until you're very close to the metal point buoy. Now we have a plain green light, no numbering, it's 10 feet above the high water mark. Fixed light, no flashing. It's on a fishing pier, also called a park department boat ramp light. Private, not maintained by the Coast Guard. We want to put this on the left or port side of the vessel when southbound and entering the marina. And this light gets hit a couple of times a year by boats. Safe water markers. There's unobstructed water on all sides. May be lettered. May have a red top mark. Fairways, mid-channels, offshore approach points are what these are used for. Let's take a look at one of them here. They have a safe water marker locally called red and white buoy or red and white entrance buoy. It's a red and white structure. White flashing with the Morris aid, which is a dot dash. This channel marks the center of the channel going into the Ballard Locks. This can be passed on either side, but you need to be careful about the traffic pattern because you can have a hundred or more boats outbound when the large locks empty, making traffic in the channel a bit of a challenge. Now we have a green buoy. It's floating. There's no light. Position is approximate due to the anchor road and watch circle, shaped like a can. It's not lighted, so red right returning from the sea Pass this buoy on your left or port side when inbound. Now we have the south breakwater light, it's flashing green, two and a half seconds, it's anchored solid to the ground, position is really good, shown by the dot. The magenta exclamation point indicates it's a lighted aid. Red right returning from the sea, pass this light to the left or port side of the vessel when entering the marina. Don't get too close to the rocks. When entering or leaving the marina, you want to swing a bit wide and slow down so you can see around the breakwater. That's for added safety. Now we have just a plain floating buoy number four, also called a nun. So red right returning from the sea, we pass this buoy on the right or starboard side of the vessel when inbound. Marks the right hand side of the channel. Cutting the corner between buoys two and four, while a common practice, can be a bit of a problem at low tide. So we have red right returning. Aids to navigation do not have to come in matched pairs. The placement depends on the navigation hazards and vessel traffic. Red right returning, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Going around islands and channels, there can be two returning from the sea entrances. So you need to look on the chart to see where the change takes place in the context of the marks. The Swanomish Channel, north of Seattle from Anacortes to Laconer, is one example of this. Not all lights are on the chart. There is a uh, flashing yellow lights on the northeast and southwest corners of the pier three yellowish white floodlights on at the ladders and about 14 lights on the walkway so the pier should be easy to see at night but none of those lights show on the chart so this can be a bit confusing and the wall is also sometimes used for more large vessels which would obscure some of the lights at times let's take a look at range markers or range day boards they're fixed they're used in pairs the front board is lower than the back board, so it works like a gun sight. So we can mark a course at a distance from the markers. So let's take a look and see what they are actually. The uh, front channel marker here is 20 feet, quick flashing. Then the rear light is higher at 81 feet. ISO, the light and dark areas are the same. And there we have the lower marker. And when everything is OK, it's lined up vertical. That tells us that we're in the center. If you get off course, you want to drive towards the lower marker. So let's take a look at how range markers work. The first view is from the right-hand side of the channel. You want to drive to the left or port 
towards the lower mark. If you're on the left side of the channel, that's a view there, we want to drive to the right or starboard. And when you're lined up in the center of the channel, everything lines up vertically, just like on a gun sight. So this is the end of part one, introduction on it, and uh, we'll be right back with part two in a moment.